Aaron Piper, The Price of Thirst, Global Water Inequality, and the Coming Chaos. Welcome to the world of The Price of Thirst, Global Water Inequality, and the Coming Chaos, a vital read to understand the pressing issue of water scarcity. Here, we will explore the many factors contributing to the lack of drinkable water, its unequal distribution, and the consequences of privatization of water resources. Delve into the complications of water pollution, groundwater depletion, melting glaciers, urbanization, and the exploitation of water resources as a profit-making commodity. Through this book summary, learn about the challenges faced by populations across the globe and the potential threats that may lead us to chaos. Global Water Scarcity Lack of potable water is becoming a great challenge. 70% of the Earth's surface is covered with water, yet scarcity of drinkable water is a growing concern worldwide. Access to potable water is further compromised due to pollution and the high prevalence of waterborne diseases resulting from poor sanitation. Underground water reserves, known as aquifers, are another source of drinkable water. However, overextraction for water supply depletes the underground water reserves and leads to subsidence, causing the land to sink. Climate change has also come into the equation, causing glaciers to melt at alarming rates and posing a threat to freshwater rivers, which may disappear over time. Unequal distribution of potable water is also a major concern, with cities facing greater demand than ever, while the supply of groundwater and surface water is diminishing. The Profits of Water Private water companies profit from treating, delivering, buying, and selling water, deviating from public water utilities that focus on common good. Water is fundamental for human survival, prompting an increasing demand for potable water worldwide. Private water companies have found a new way to exploit this basic need by profiting from water treatment and delivery. Unlike public services, these companies prioritize profit by arbitrarily increasing prices, cutting infrastructure and labor costs by firing employees, and neglecting infrastructure repairs. Another way to earn profits from water is marketing, that is, buying and selling water rights. Water, whether from a river, stream, or lake, can be bought and sold separately from the land where it is situated. These companies can purchase consumptive or non-consumptive rights, such as delivering to a private tap, building dams, and producing hydroelectric power. Chile was the first country to privatize all its water resources, opening the door for corporations to purchase non-consumptive rights for rivers. Endesa, a former public utility company, was privatized in 1989 and controls non-consumptive rights for the Baker River. In regions where water scarcity is recurrent, water can be deposited in water banks. In wet years, farmers may withhold a portion of their water allocation and store it in an aquifer to sell or reserve it. All these practices have one thing in common, profit maximization. Private water companies deviate from public water utilities, centered on the common good, to generate revenue by treating, delivering, buying, and selling water rights, creating a precarious cycle that causes prices to skyrocket. The Privatization of Water The outsourcing of public water utilities to private contractors is a common practice, but it has a questionable history. In the 19th century, privatization was widespread in the US and Europe, but the numerous outbreaks of waterborne diseases and lack of access to potable water led to its return to public management. Despite this dismal record, the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund promote water privatization for developing countries, tying it to critical loans. However, privatization is just part of their goal to promote deregulation and downsizing of governments. Additionally, the World Bank owns shares in major water companies such as Veolia. This approach has led to diminishing access to clean water for South Africa's poorest after accepting IMF loan conditions. As a result, water privatization has not delivered on its promise to improve access to clean water, and yet it is being forced, bypassing public control and accountability, onto developing countries. The Profitable Business of Water Multinational water companies have found a way to generate significant profits by catering to the poorest people in developing countries. 
Privatization projects supported by the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank operate on the grounds of full cost recovery, which means that private companies cover the costs of laying pipes and updating infrastructure through added fees paid by water users. As a result, a consumer's water bill includes fees paid to the company for installing and maintaining water supply in addition to the price for using water. Private companies invest in public water utilities in exchange for a profit rate of 15 to 30 percent, while the cost of water for citizens increases substantially. However, to fulfill promises of consistent profits, governments often pay subsidies to poor citizens who cannot afford the rising cost of water. Therefore, financially speaking, the private companies are the only ones winning in water privatization schemes while cities and citizens lose steady income sources and pay higher prices. Water inequality The consequences of unequal access to clean water are explored in Cairo, with privatization causing skyrocketing prices and broken promises of improving water quality. The unequal distribution of water also leads to social unrest with water deprivation playing a role in the revolution that toppled Hosni Mubarak's government. The consequences of unequal water distribution are not limited to national borders and can lead to international conflict, as seen with Turkey's World Bank-funded Greater Anatolia project threatening the access of Syria and Iraq to the Euphrates and Tigris rivers. Private Water Rights and Long-Term Environmental Damage Private companies that control water rights prioritize short-term profits over preventing long-term environmental damage. Large dams built by private energy companies are complicit in worsening the effects of climate change. Organic materials in dam reservoirs produce vast amounts of methane, which is 20 times more powerful than carbon dioxide as a greenhouse gas. This methane emission is a major contributor to climate change. Dams can produce more harmful greenhouse gases than fossil fuel-burning power plants. Draining lake beds or riverbeds can release hazardous substances into the air, making carbon dioxide and methane airborne. The result is a devastating impact on the environment and air quality in nearby cities. The 1913 draining of Owens Lake for potable water led to its becoming one of the largest sources of particulate pollution in the United States, and it still needs to be irrigated with water from other sources to prevent further carcinogenic metals from becoming airborne. We need to be mindful that water systems are fragile, and we cannot take our natural resources for granted without serious ecological consequences. Untangling Water Supplies from Private Corporations Reclaiming water supplies from private corporations is easier said than done due to practical, legal, and investment reasons. Legal contracts that bind privatization agreements for a period of up to 30 years make it difficult for the government to cancel contracts, and private companies can sue the government for cancelling them. Tanzania's conflict with British-owned Bywater is an example of this. Tanzania cancelled its contract with Bywater due to failure to fulfill its duties and breach of contract, but the country was sued for $20 million. Revenues from water companies not only affect national economies but also individual citizens who invest privately. Severing ties with companies that behave poorly in water management or rights is difficult as multinational corporations are often involved with or held by different parent companies and investment portfolios. Even pension funds are major shareholders of American water, meaning that any drop in profits could jeopardize the pension benefits of many people. The privatization of water supplies and employee pensions makes it a challenging choice for city governments. It is clear that untangling private corporations from water supplies is not a simple task. Tackling the Global Water Crisis the rapid growth and urbanization of cities are exerting intense pressure on local water supplies causing an acute water crisis worldwide. As demand continues to rise, water pollution and cost of treatment have also become major issues, which require a solution. The primary solution proposed is to curb climate change, which accelerates the melting of glaciers, the largest freshwater reservoirs on Earth. Small-scale local solutions, such as rainwater collection or building small dams, are also suggested. The key is to return to a more sustainable way of living and to stop treating water as an economic commodity.
The message is that we can effectively tackle the global water crisis only if we are willing to make changes in our way of life. As we conclude this summary of The Price of Thirst, it's evident that the global water inequality crisis is a result of multiple factors, including pollution, resource overextraction, climate change, rising urbanization, and the privatization of water management. While short-term profits motivate private firms, long-term environmental damage and unequal distribution of water contribute to social unrest and the worsening water crisis. It is of utmost importance that we find a sustainable solution by curbing climate change, re-evaluating our urban development, and treating water as a valuable resource instead of an economic commodity. Only then can we tackle the global water crisis and avoid the impending chaos.